All right, thanks, uh, first of all, to everybody that came out to the game. We certainly appreciate it. It was the first time uh, for many of our players um, to get to play in front of a home crowd. It wasn't that long ago uh, that many of the guys that played in this game were uh, in the stands for these things. So uh, I thought the, the fan participation was fantastic. Um, obviously, I'm happy to uh, have our team find a way to win the ball game. Um, really wanted to keep the focus on football and not all the other stuff, and I think our kids did a good job of that. Um, you know, it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a circus, quite honestly, and really wanted our guys to stay focused on the task at hand, and uh, they did a good job of that, um, finding a way to 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 win the game. We've got plenty of things to, to work on, um, but uh, obviously a big play in special teams when we were, uh, I believe, up by seven and they had just scored and huge play there by our, by our kickoff return unit to kind of sway the momentum back in our favor. Coach, in terms of the offensive line, um, do you have any update uh, on Hoyt and Jackson? And what did you think of the kids who filled in and how they played? Well, I have to watch the film. I mean, obviously, it wasn't wasn't perfect. We played a couple true freshmen. We played uh, a redshirt freshman. All those things, which nobody like. I'm, those are just facts. Um, we'll have to look at it and continue to get better. I mean, continue to coach off that and and see how they see how they played. Um, you know, Hoyt and Jackson will be back when they're ready. I mean, they're not, um, you know, Hoyt dressed and was there for emergency because of the position he played center in case we get so far down that list that you, you can't even put the ball in play. Um, but I anticipate they'll be back when they're ready. Uh, with Brian Willis, did you hold him out at the end because you were concerned about injury, or was it after the fumble you wanted to well, hold him? Well, I was out? a little concerned, and I also didn't like that we turned the ball over. Um, I was, you know, when he would get, was a little shaky getting up, I was yelling at him to get down so we could sub. He got us on the goal line down there. Uh, um, Dalton got hurt and stepped off the side and was getting treatment and we didn't know that he was hurt you know all of a sudden we call the play and we don't have Dalton out and we don't even know it so that got us on there so I was trying to get Ryan to go down well Ryan thought I was telling him to slot that to get down when he's running the ball which I can see now why he thought that so anyway um, you know I held him out because I, I wanted to make sure he was okay he was ready to go back and all that sort of stuff and because we turned the ball up and then on that pass interference that wasn't called uh, on the deep play, were you more upset about the inconsistency? Did you see similarities with the previous call they did call on you guys? Yeah, I thought it was. A, I thought it should have been called. Um, personally, I thought it was pretty clear. Um, they've got a tough job. I do know that. So, <clears throat> Justin, huge play that it was was. Wheatley's return, something you all had designed, that you had seen in their coverage. How did that all evolve? Well, they were squeezing pretty hard, so it was a field return. Um, nothing that was new. Um, you know, we always carry um, boundary and field returns into a game. So we called the field, and, and he had a crease, and I guess he ran out of gas there at the end. But um, it was a huge play for us. Just, just a quickie assessment of Ryan. It seemed like he made, had some throws that he missed, had some throws that were, he was fortunate that, you know, maybe bad throws, and then some where guys didn't help him out when they could have. What, kind of just what your quickie assessment of what you saw. <coughs> well, um, I guess I would say um, he made a couple plays that were pretty dang impressive. Um, Really quick snap decisions and got the ball in great spots. Um, you know, there's still a few decisions that we've got to be better at. I mean, that's just simple. And it sounds very easy, and it's not. 
but that's part of our focus moving forward. Two questions. Uh, one, Keyshawn looked like he had something going early on, and then we didn't see him again really after the first quarter. What happened with him? Did he get nicked up? And then second of all, it's a little bit of a reverse of what happened last week with the defense where you struggled the first half, second half really picked it up, and now this time it seemed like the, the reverse of that where you only gave up 70 yards in the first half, gave up a bunch of rushing yards in the second half. What happened there as far as rush defense is concerned? I think you had 155 yards. I know some of that was quarterback getting out of the pocket sure. and scrambling for some. Uh, Keyshawn's fine. Uh, he's got to get up with the ball in his hands to get to continue to get carries. Um, as far as defensively, um, you know they basically came out. Basically, I'm not oversimplifying it, but basically came out and were every unbalanced formation you could imagine: fly sweep, arcing the tight ends um, in the first half, and we um, <clears throat> began to pressure it a little bit and defended it really well. And in the second half, it was more passing formations, more spread type things. We were um, spread out a little bit, trying to defend the pass a little bit, and, and got hurt up inside a few times. You went up 24-3 in that third quarter, and they came back with a couple touchdowns, broke some tackles on some plays. Do you feel like there was an energy letdown at all once you got that big lead? Oh. I didn't feel that on the sidelines. I know what you're talking about. I have felt it before in my career. I didn't feel that, but I, you know, I know when it was down to seven points, there was some real urgency for us to find a way to go kind of finish the thing off. So I didn't feel like we relaxed. I feel like we didn't execute very well at times, and, and, and they made some plays to get themselves back in the game. I know the kids who had transferred over there from here had said, they were looking forward to seeing some of their teammates on the field after the game when it was all said and done. Did you see Eric Kuma and Chris Cunningham speak to them at all after the game? And if so, uh, what I did you see? I saw Eric, told him congratulations and wished him the best of luck. I didn't see Chris. I looked for him, but I didn't see him. With that uh, jumbo package that you guys use with Tanuta coming in, uh, is he eligible on that play? And how much do you kind of like all that look? You went to it a couple of times. Uh, when he has eligible jersey on, he's eligible. Um, I know, I, not being a smart aleck, but that's why we switched the jerseys on and off. So he just can, so he can be eligible. Um, so I mean, not, it's just something we've been tinkering with for some time. Like I like our tight ends, um, Tanuta. I like him on the line of scrimmage. Um, so we'll see how much more of it we do. Um, and you said in your opening it was a little bit of a circus this week. Is it weird? I mean, how weird is it to have your team go against former players. I mean, transfers are happening more and more, but schedules don't often align and things like that. How weird was that, do you think, for the team? I don't know. Like, we tried to really, honestly, I'm not coach speak. I'm sure you guys will roll your eyes. We tried to really just focus on our improvement, trying to get better for the game. I mean, there was a lot that went into all that between the game last year, all that sort of stuff. And for, for us, it was like, we can't do anything about any of that other than we have to focus on the football game and get ready to play football. Because talk, and I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but all the, all the stuff outside, the talk and the you know, uh, things that, that go on, like we can't concern ourselves with those things. We just can't. We have to focus on trying to get better and finding a way to win the game. And I thought, by and large, our guys did a good job of that. It is a unique situation. But I thought, um, I thought our guys um, did a good job. Final question, Dave. We haven't mentioned Grimsley's touchdown reception. I don't know what your view of it was. I had if a really had, bad view of it. Oh, oh, uh, did, did you watch the replay? The drew, degree of difficulty looked pretty I high. Like, I, I couldn't tell. Like, I just saw the replay real quick. Was it, like, what exactly had, did, was it? Yeah. Kept it to himself when it with it. And then caught it. That was pretty cool. I was so happy for him. Like. I mean, you talk about a guy that we're all pulling for um, because of how he works and the things that he's been through. I just, you know, when you see guys have success that we see every day behind the scenes work so hard and we know we've, we've been in their living room and we, we just, um, it's really cool to, to have, those are special moments when, not just that it was a fantastic catch, but to see those guys have success is pretty fulfilling. So 
I mean, acrobatic, fantastic. Um, happy he pulled it in, but but even happier for the smile on his face when he came off the field. Was he a little down after last week, after the punt? Oh, uh, I mean, certainly I think he was disappointed about that. You know, it was kind of weird. He catches a big post over the top for a touchdown and then um, – and then has a miscue on punt return. And he takes his performance very seriously. And he's not a powder. He's not a guy that, that lets you know that, that he's upset. Um, he's just a guy that, that pulls himself up and shows up and works hard. You bet. Coach, was the team play on the second half of the goal line? Yeah, it was when we got the penalty. We ran the ball. And they gave us a legal substitution penalty because we were trying to run a guy in. Yeah, like we were caught in between. You know, if, Ryan, if, if we could have got Ryan's attention to know that we only had 10 guys, but Dalton stepped off to the side. It was weird. I've never had that happen before. Yeah, let's go. But what was the challenge that their quarterback presented with his mobility, and how do you think your guys handled it? Uh, we did, I think, all right early. Uh, I thought we played, for the most part, pretty solid all day. Then we went through about a two-series stretch uh, in, the, in late in the third quarter, early fourth quarter, that we reverted back to um, you know, really poor execution, um, a poor tackling. Um, you know, that type of thing. I mean, I think their quarterback's an athletic guy, uh, creates some problems uh, with the ball in his hand. Um, but um, I thought all in all, we, we played solid, except for, you know, about a couple series, you know, when it's all said and done. Um, you're going to, those, that guy's going to create some plays. He got out in space on, on Dax one time, and we is designed to, you know, take the ball out of his hand, and we, we had that, just go get up there and, and play and busted a couple things. I, had, I made a bad call on one of the long runs there. They popped about a 30 or 40 yard run right up the pipe. We were in, a too deep uh, kind of a pressure and vacating everybody out to go run underneath routes, um, you know, and they popped a run right there. But, uh, you know, a lot of their, you know, all in all, I, I was pleased with our kids and how we fought. And But, we again, it goes back. we got to play for 60 minutes. We can't play for 50 or 45, and that's where we got to, you know, continue to make strides. But uh, your front four seems to be having problems getting pressure just by themselves without a blitz. What are you seeing, and, and what are you guys trying to do? I know you're well. We're you're young, new and there. I'd say we uh, we we dropped eight a bunch today. You know, uh, so you know that's not always fair to them when they're going to, you know, block six or seven guys. You know, today early on, a lot of max protect. You know, so that was my thought about getting some pressure we blitzed quite a bit today because if not they were going to just you know quarterback was going to be able to sit back there and, and uh, uh, you know have plenty of time so that was kind of once I saw how they came out and they did a couple things early with this jet sweep and stuff that they had not shown particularly with the quarterback under center uh, but um, the end of the day, uh, we got good pressure. I don't know how many sacks we had. I know we had the quarterback moving quite a bit, which uh, we've got to be able to, uh, you know, come off of things. We, I felt like at times we were concerned about getting too much up the field and creating lanes for him to escape and then get out in space and run. That I think it probably slowed us down and we mirrored him more than I wanted to be aggressive, but yet not get run by the quarterback. You know, and those are things we're young. Um, you know, and those guys are gaining valuable experience uh, every week, and we've just got to continue to improve and get better. And and um, and we played a bunch of young guys up front, and um, but I'm encouraged by uh, them continuing to get better. With uh, Caleb Farley's pass interference in the end zone, what did, did you see that play? And, and did you think he did a good job? And yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know, we'll look at it. I mean, that's going to happen. I brought man pressure. Um, you know, that was one of those bang bang plays. The one I was disappointed in was the one, the third and long. Uh, he didn't need to be, you know, tied up with the guy. I mean, uh, um, you need to go play, go play uh, what you're doing, and, and you don't need to jockey with that guy down the field as far as getting your hands on him and whatnot. That play on the goal line, that's going to happen, you know. Um, uh, you know, I have to look at it. Obviously, I, just what I saw was a bang, bang. We had good pressure. Rook was coming. The quarterback threw. If you guys saw the video, he chucked and ducked, man. So, you know, I don't even know if the ball was going to make it. But, um, um 
you know, those, those, some of those are going to happen like that. I was just disappointed in the one down the field in front of their bench on their early third and long situation. And then defending Eric Kuma, uh, Jermaine Weller broke up a couple of long pass plays against him. What was it like facing, you know, former player like that? I mean, schedules don't align when players transfer like that. How did you guys feel you contained him, and what was it like? Kind you of know, I don't him? know. I mean, um, I really didn't. That, that wasn't about stopping Eric Kuma or anybody like that. I mean, it's about just going and playing, you know, Virginia Tech football. Um, Eric searched me up afterwards. I recruited Eric, um, you know, uh, wished him nothing but the very best. Uh, he was so appreciative of me giving him the opportunity to play uh, college football. And, and uh, you know, I told him at the end, this will be a relationship for a lifetime. That's part of when I recruited him, it was going to be that way. And uh, But it wasn't about stopping Eric Kuma. It was about, you know, my biggest concern was about the quarterback. How talented was he going to be, um, you know, and, and uh, how dangerous was he going to be. Um, you know, that was my biggest concern. Coach, after last week, Javon Quillen going down, Jermaine Waller coming in, kind of having – up and down. What did you see from him today? Because he seemed to be a, at least more comfortable in coverage and really didn't have any give up any big plays like he did last week. Yeah, you know, Waller, you know, the big play he gave up last week was just a busted coverage, which uh, I was completely, if, if anybody doing that last week, I would have been, I would have told you Waller wouldn't have been, he would have been my last guy that I said would have done that because of what his body of work was uh, through spring, through summer, and then through, through fall camp. Uh, probably was our best defensive back in all that time, um, you know, and just kind of maybe first game jitters a little bit, you know. And uh, uh, today we weren't going to press him a whole lot, though, today. You know, I wanted them to have to see if that quarterback, number one, I, was, I did question what his ability to throw the ball down the field was. Um, but I didn't want to give him anything cheap either, you know, which I thought last year we gave him a lot of cheap plays, big plays down the field, and I didn't want to do that this year. Um, and just keeping the ball in front, you know, there weren't many yards after the catch, which was, which, which was big out there when the ball is played, you know, out in space, and, and I thought that we did a nice job with that. I thought our tackling, though, and, and for the most part, was just kind of average today. Um, and, but that's what the game uh, creates right now with a, lot of, with a lot of athletes in space and getting linebackers trying to make plays and with guys in space and that type of thing. You, you'll see some missed tackles and see some guys outrun some guys a little bit, you know, when they're running full speed. But uh, I thought uh, Jermaine played an outstanding football game when it was all said and done. Had a sack. I think he was going to have another one, but we busted, uh, you know, on our defensive end, busted uh, the blitz, you know, a couple times. And so we, had a, we were going to have a, a outnumber him in that scenario. So, you know, he could have had, a, I think, a couple more. It was all said and done. Now that it's behind you, what was the experience of coaching against Brian, Coach Stein? You know, I talked to Brian just briefly before the game. I didn't see him before the game. Really, I saw him just as we were getting ready to go off the field. I went over and hugged his neck and, uh, you know, um, and uh, just told him how I felt about him, you know, real quick. You know, and I told him, we'll, we'll be in touch. Uh, it's always difficult, like I said, particularly, you know, you, you like I said, you have friends in this business, um, but, you know, a guy like Brian and I, we were together for 25 plus years. And um, that's more than a friendship. That's a brother. You know what I mean? And that's a guy we've, spent, we've been in a lot of battles together. You know, we've, we've, we've had a lot of laughs. We've shed a lot of tears together. I mean, that's, that's a guy that's, um, like I said, that's a special guy in my eyes as far as, um, you know, he's been a big, big part of our success here. And, you know, people forget that, I think, sometimes. And guys move on. Uh, but he was a big, big part of what we had some, some really outstanding seasons and some great offenses. And, you know, he was a great football coach and a great friend. So it was, um, you, know, always, you know, that's always kind of bittersweet when it's said and done. Okay, thank you, guys. You walk us through that uh, pretty impressive juggling catch you made. What did you see and what happened? Uh, that catch, uh, I seen Ryan. I mean, the DB played it over top, so me and Ryan was on the same page. and made eye contact, but he threw it inside. Obviously, it was a little more outside, so it was just the matter of looking the ball in. And uh, I didn't plan on making a one-hand catch. It was just, I just stopped the ball in there. It just fell where it fell, but I'm glad it happened. So You talked about um, the frustration of last year's ODU game and then – the, the muff punt a week ago, how good did it feel to make a play like that uh, with those things kind of for context? Uh, first of all, I feel good like winning again because we haven't won 
who knows how long but uh it felt good like redeeming myself from the muff punt and then last year i had a couple jobs that could have been touchdowns but uh just you know leaving that in the past it just feels good to get past that and make everybody forget about that it seems like odell beckham jr's one-handed catches have made that so much more popular is that something wide receivers work on a lot more now uh yeah because i mean at this level obviously we got this far because we know how to catch with two hands so might as well work on something that you know not really not a lot of people work on and it's crazy you said that because my favorite receiver so to make that play i mean it, me it means it means a lot to me but uh, I guess like now nah, this generation we want to make ESPN and all these uh, highlights and everything but yeah I would say it's something that we work on a lot. Two fumbles in the second half and you, you didn't but when you guys are struggling continue with the bulk security and things like that and have a minus six turnover margin do you know the coaches are going to really get on you again this week I mean how much more difficult is it when you guys kind of struggle and how much pressure does that put on you guys I mean, pressure is the right word, but just uh, added kind of things in practice to focus on that. Uh, when somebody loses the ball, like as much as we emphasize ball security, it's like it's a big deal. Even if we're up, like we could be about 30. If somebody fumble, it's like we're down. Like it's it's a big deal for somebody to lose the ball because as much as we work on it and our DBs trying to rip the ball out every practice and our coaches trying to rip the ball out. So it's not like that's not us. We know that's not how we play, and we know we just got a lot of things to clean up. As he obviously – Mission accomplished, getting the win. But how do you how do you feel about where you guys are? Just you know, I mean, do you feel like you have a lot of work to left to do? Do you feel like uh, you gained some confidence today with your performance? How do you feel? Uh, as far as today's win, uh, it was sloppy, but I mean, we all know we got a lot to clean up. Uh, we know uh, it, it could have been way you know better on our side, but. As far as the team go, how I feel about the team, I feel like we're closer than last year. Like we, like it's more like a brotherhood, not a team. It's we standing for each other, we believe in each other, and uh, I feel like we going places like with that uh, emotion. It got tight there when they pulled within 24-17, and then Wheatley breaks up the long kickoff return. How much is that uh, a sigh of relief or just a, a little bit of a breathing room there for you guys? Uh, instead of relief, it's more like excitement because t- uh, Wheatley is not like a guy that talks a lot. So when he does like stuff like that, it's just like, wow, that, like, that was weak. But as far as the kick return goes, that, that, I mean, it was, it was a break on us. That's what we needed. At the, it came at the right time. It's been a while since kick- KOR made a, a big return, but – Obviously, it came out the right time. So, Coach Fuente was saying that he really couldn't have been happier for anyone more than he was for you in, in making that catch and to see you have success just because of how hard you work all the time. Where does that work ethic come from? Uh, it comes from my mom, honestly. Me and Coach Fu had a talk the other day about like how I grew up and my mom and everything. So he knows like what I've been through and everything. Like we have a tight uh, relationship. So I feel like that's why he was the most proud of me because he said he know what I've been through in my life and everything. So, but as far as the work ethic goes and always working hard, it comes from my mom, like no doubt. Uh, you mentioned to us that you had a good friendship with Eric Kuma. Did you get to talk to him on the field today? What was it like to, to go against him? Obviously not head to head, but, um, and what did you say to each other after the game? Uh, we didn't talk during the game, obviously, because he played offense, I played offense. But, uh, I didn't see him after the game either, but before the game, like pre-workout, we was all smiles, all love and everything. It was no hard feelings. Um, it was just me and him like pushing each other to compete, who gets the big plays and who's going to have the most yards. But that's just like a side thing we had. But as far as relationship-wise, that's, that's still my dog to this day. So would that catch if you win that little competition? Oh, no doubt. I'll I beat him up. Like, two catches today? No, I think I'll beat him by a lot. <laughs> Thank you very much. No problem. Appreciate y'all. You guys worked really hard this week to kind of focus on this game, not talk about last year. Obviously, you were aware of it, and I'm sure it was motivating. Do you feel like you did enough today to kind of bury last year's result, uh, or was there so much left out there that it maybe lingers a little bit? Yeah, we definitely try not to publicly talk about what happened last year. Even within ourselves, we try to just practice every day and get ready for a game just like we do every week. But 
I think that loss is always going to sting this program just a little bit. But today, I, it doesn't really matter to me. At the end of the day, we won the game. Um, we got to go 1-0 and each week. And that's just how we're going to approach every game. But it did feel good to get a W over those guys today. It's the second game in a row that Bud's mentioned the idea of playing a full four quarters, mm -hmm. a full 60 minutes. I assume he gave that message to you guys, yeah. too. What do you think it is right now? Is it youth or inexperience that, that is stopping you from putting together a full game as a defense? I'm not sure what it is. I think we kind of just get in the moment sometimes. Um, we, might, we might let our guard down at times, but and I think we just got to get back to work. And Coach Foster does like harp on that. He needs, like today, I think we played like 50 minutes of, of defense that we were capable of playing. We just need to be able to put together a full game plan and really go at it again this week and um, focus in on every single drive, every single play matters. And I mean, one play can make a whole difference in the game. Jared, it seemed like there were times today where and not you individually, but just as the defense, if if one guy had wrapped up, maybe a drive ends, and yeah. maybe we're looking at a game where they get 120 yards instead yeah. of 300. It, was that kind of frustrating that, that those drives kind of continued a couple times? It's definitely frustrating when you get in the backfield and you you know you got a great rush or you you know what I'm saying you have a great um, you know, getting off the block, but you got to give it to that quarterback and even those running backs they're slippery out there. I mean they're they're some good athletes, but you're right. I mean that's where we really got to get better, especially in the backfield making those TFLs and then those sacks because I mean those are big momentum plays and that's those plays that kind of take away from our momentum when we got him in the backfield and he scrambles for a six yard rush and gets the first down. So that's definitely something we're going to be working on in the future. Did they did they catch you off a little bit just because I, Coach Fuente was saying that early on they were trying some of the sweeps and stuff to get mm -hmm. to the perimeter of the field and then the second half they went back to some of their more traditional spread type stuff and mm -hmm. beat you up the middle and, and inside a little bit did they mm -hmm. did they catch you a little bit with some of that stuff I mean every week to week we have a game plan and you know we're always going to attack that game plan and every week a team's going to have a little wrinkle that we haven't seen or something that they're preparing to play against <laughs> us and it's all about halftime adjustments it's how we're going to. Uh, you know what I'm saying, make the correction and what we're going to do about it in the second half. And I think that sweet play we had a plan for in the second half, we kind of shut it down. You're right. They kind of started going other directions. But um, like I said, week to week, I think adjustments is like a big key to our, um, our game plans during a game. I don't know specifically what, what he did today, but uh, Deshaun Crawford, getting used to him as a teammate, mm -hmm. playing next to him, what have you seen from him and, and what is he bringing to his <clears throat> defense? Nothing but growth. I mean, since the day he got here, I mean, he would get frustrated kind of in the spring. I mean, it's kind of a complex defense to, to be able to grasp. And he kind of was iffy sometimes of whether, you know, he's just getting down on himself a lot. But throughout the summer and camp and then into now, man, he's just growing day by day as a person. He's become more of a grown man every single day, and he's getting more comfortable. And um, I'm really excited for the future that he's got. You're obviously a guy who's got so much strength to his game. He's got a little bit more, I guess, of a quickness is, is his style. Mm -hmm. um, how different are your styles? And uh, is it good to kind of line up two guys who, who play it a little bit differently? Yeah, we're not too different, I would say. But you're right, he does have some quick uh, finesse. But I mean, it, we're kind of undersized. He tackles the both of us. And we can kind of get around guys. We can, you know, we see a pulling guard, we'll just go shoot it. But you know what I'm saying? It, it's good. I think there's a good combination we have, even with our young guys. We have a really good rotation right now with Mario and Norell. I mean, they're playing really well, and Rob Porsche came in and did a good job today, too. Last question, Tim. Jared, you mentioned briefly at the end Mario and Norell coming in as true freshmen. What have mm. you seen from them so far, and what areas are you kind of as a veteran guy trying to push them in terms of whether it's some of the experience that you mm -hmm. can share with them or some of the techniques that you may know that you may be able to help mm -hmm. them refine? What have you seen from them? Well, their ability, and they have, some, they have some serious ability. I mean, they came in ready to go. I mean, they came in in shape. They came in with the mechanics of a good defense alignment. I just tell them every game, go be confident, man. You can, you can play at this level. Those guys, I mean, you know, I'm a Florida guy, and they're from Florida, too. It's so always, you know, brag on them because my home state. But, I mean, I think that they're just they're, they're two dogs ready to go. And I think at some point, like, Norrell had that play today where he could have had a sack on fourth down. That, I think that's just all confidence. He hits a good pass rush. He just needs to go finish the play. And I think that even I can be at that. Yeah, you know, that stage sometimes, but I think the confidence level of them—they're going to keep keep getting more experienced, more confident. I cannot wait to see what those two do. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank y'all. Uh, Coach Fuente said, you know, you were kind of healthy enough to come back uh, and for that final stretch, but he. I uh, wanted to kind of make a point. Do you feel that that was the case, and do you feel that you kind of got it that the ball security's got to kind of improve here now? Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate that I fumbled. Um, kind of got my neck jammed in myself and rolled on top of the guy, and he stripped it out. It's a good play to, by a defender. Um, I'm okay. I'm healthy. It's kind of precautionary. We're planning on handing the ball off anyways. 
uh, just trying to run the clock out, and I'll be ready to go next week. I know you don't forget that play, but let's say that play aside, in terms of the interceptions a week ago versus your ball security in that area today, were you happy with your decisions? It looked like there was only one that was super risky today. Were you happy with your decision making? Yeah, I was pleased. Um, definitely want to take advantage of more opportunities they gave us. Uh, could connect on a few long shots. Uh, they're sitting in quarters all day, and we're throwing posts left and right. And not all of them completed. And I mean, we still have room to grow, which is awesome. Uh, this offense has been pretty explosive so far. And if we can keep the ball in our own hands, um, we got a good chance of winning the game every week. You guys were pretty dedicated to not talking much about last year's game during the week as you prepped and everything. Uh, now that it's here and it's done, when you think about today, did you do enough today to kind of put that result fully behind you? Or do you think it lingers a little because this game was kind of competitive? Going into this game, Coach Fuente was stressing that it's a 2019 Virginia Tech Hokies versus a 2019 Old Dominion Monarchs. Um, to be success successful in athletics at this level, you have to have a short memory. And that was a year ago. It's a whole new team. They're a whole new team. They had 42 new players. And I don't think last year really affected us at all today. Um, it wasn't too chippy. Uh, it's just another game. Uh, we'd go out there and handle business, and we did today. They make it a one-score game, then Terrius takes that kickoff return down the sideline, then three plays later you connect with Phil for the touchdown. How big was just that sequence in the whole term of the game to swing the momentum back to you guys? Yeah, that was awesome by Wheatley. I thought he was going to take it to the house. Um, uh, he set us up in a really good field position, and we took advantage of it, and Phil's open, and threw it to him. It was a pretty simple play. How would you describe Grimsley's catch in the end zone? Did you get a good view of it? I'm really proud of Ezzy. Uh, he's really grown a lot. Uh, he's really stepping up into a big role for our team. And he just continues to make plays. Uh, he had a big catch last week, and he did this week too. Um, he's still going to take the next step and grow, and we expect a lot, of out, a lot out of him, and I think he's up to it. And then how would you, at times today, you had three freshmen on, on the offensive line. How would you assess how they were doing? Yeah. Uh, I think freshman offensive line, uh, on paper it's scary, but I know those guys, and those guys are well prepared. Um, we got the right guys out there, and I'm proud of them. Um, it's hard to play college football as a true freshman, and those guys really stepped up for us. On that touchdown pass to Patterson, what, what was sort of the design of that? It looks like you had to wait for him to come open a little bit to the sideline. Yeah. Uh, it was a little progression read, and he had a little stem corner, and he just kind of snapped the guy off, and he was kind of wide open. Anything else for Ryan? Thanks, guys. Uh, defensively, Coach Foster's been talking about not being able to put together four quarters in a game. From your vantage point, what do you think is preventing that from happening? I don't really think nothing's preventing that. I mean, I feel like we're doing pretty good. It's like we got a couple like misreads, like miscommunications coming from the sideline. But other than that, I feel like we're pulling along way better than we did last year. Like the defense as a whole is just coming along way better. For you personally, how would you evaluate your play today and, and where your game's at right now? Uh, me personally, I feel like I'm pretty, pretty good. I got good pressure on the quarterback. I had like a couple like misreads probably where I could have spilled or came over top, but it wasn't nothing like that killed me. But I think I played pretty good. What has that position switch been like for you? I've embraced it. I love it. Like at linebacker, it was kind of like I was dragging. I was kind of slower than everybody else, me being heavier. And then them like coming to me saying, like, maybe we want to move you down to the line. Like at first it was like, well, I don't know. Cause I've been playing linebacker all my life. This is my first time my hand ever been in the dirt. But I embraced it, trusted the process, and now I'm here. Blessed. 
Fuente said you were kind of fighting where your body wanted to go weight-wise. Is it nice not to have to, I mean, I suppose you probably have to eat a lot to pack on the pounds now. Yeah, it's, n it's nice to go home and be able to eat how I want. <laughs> it's like, like now it's just I can get endless plays instead of saying, oh, I can't have that tonight or trying to like lose weight. It's easy, it's easy for me to gain weight more than it is to, for me to lose. On your sack, it looked like if, if you didn't get that, he was going to have an opportunity to, to maybe gain a few yards by running the ball. Smart. Uh, is that just a case of sticking with a play and, and working off a block and just doing everything you possibly can to stretch and flip the guy's heels? Uh, like you said, like he like he was finna like get some yards. So like I thought I was gonna have a bust on that, but just busting my tail to try to get it. And like all week I've been saying I'm gonna get a sack. So like it's just it was God's plan. Back left for the work. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Do we have any other questions? I can hear what you said. <laughs> Jalen, with the transition from linebacker to defensive end, it's one that Emmanuel Belmar also went through. How important or how much of a resource has he been for you in terms of making this transition since he also made the transition from, I think, the same backer spot as well. And of course, you guys both have that Georgia tie as well. Yeah, he be, I've been like talking to him a lot. Like he's been real helpful, like very helpful. I go to him like with everything, like as far as my assignments, like what I should do here. I watch a lot, I like study him like I'm studying film basically. Cause I, I want to be starting as well. So it's just like what he doing, I'm trying to do, you know, go, go from there. Thank you very much, we appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Hagan's up. And then first questions, raise your hands. We'll leave you the microphone. David, it looked like you and Ryan were having r real success with those kind of, I don't know if you call them crossing routes, drag routes. Mm -hmm. uh, what had you seen from Old Dominion defensively coming in? Were, were you guys thinking that those type of routes would be effective today? Uh, all week we've been uh, practicing that concept, that exact same concept actually. And um, each time we did it was open. So when we ran it, it was open and I uh, made a play. He had some of those catches early, and then he had the drop out in the open uh, field there. What does Fuente say to you after a play like that? Um, just have a short memory. You know, you can't uh, let the last play affect your next one. So then just go out and execute the best you can after that. Was he pretty calm about that? He, didn't like uh, he wasn't too mad. You know, he, he knew. I knew what happened, and he knew what happened. So we just talked about it and moved on. How much, you, you know, the two more fumbles for the offense in the second half. How much has ball security, did it, did it get more of an emphasis? I mean, I know you guys put a lot, but when you guys are making those mistakes or um, you know, things are happening consistently, do you expect that to be something that you know, is, a, is more in focus here in the a week to come in practice? Uh, we practice ball security every single day. And if it's not in ball security, or you have the ball in jeopardy, they would tell you right away. So. Each time it happened in the game, you are getting yelled at by one of the coaches about putting the ball in a row. What was that moment like? I just happened to be watching Fuente on, on the sideline. He took off his headset, took off his sunglasses as if to make direct eye contact with you, and then spoke very calmly to you after that, after that drop. But just to, when your coach makes eye contact like that, does that let you know, OK, this is serious, I need to listen? Just kind of describe um, that. When he does that, or when he does it to anybody else, I just feel like he's uh, cares. He's actually uh, trying to help you and teach you and help you get better. So that's what I took out of it. How do you feel about where this team is right now? I mean, you cl close loss to Boston College, and you come back, and it's kind of a little a bit of a dogfight today, but you get the win. Wh where are you guys at in your mind? Um, I feel like we're good. We just have a each week is uh, a week to get better and learn from the past game, whether it's a win or loss, and um, come out better the next time. 
you got to run one of those jet sweeps, uh, something you kind of want to do more of? How, how much do you like kind of having a little room to run and get kind of ahead of steam uh, uh, with those plays? Uh, the thing about Cohen, he does a good job about putting, uh, uh, sharing the ball. So when I got my opportunity, I tried to make the best. And uh, I love getting out in open space. And uh, they do a good job of getting uh, our receivers out in open space. A few other guys have mentioned how you, none of y'all want to talk publicly about how important this game was based on last year's result. And now it's the 2019 Hoc Hokies and not 2018 and all that. But you mentioned earlier this week about how you sat at that game last year and how shocking the result was you know, a couple months after you'd committed to Tech. How important was today's game being a 757 guy and, like you said, knowing some of those dudes that play on, for ODU? Uh, every game's important. But uh, this one, you know, I, I knew most of those guys. So I was just um, coming out trying to do my best. And uh, everybody was doing their best to win. You know, we took a loss last week and we were trying our best to go 1-0 and this week. And we did that. Do you think you guys did enough today in the, the way this game played out to bury that ODU score from last year? Or because this one was competitive, does it still kind of linger? Um, I don't think it lingered at all. I think uh, once you win, you move on and you get ready for the next opponent. Any other questions? Great. Thank you very much.